Hello everyone, let's go through another easy caddis problem. This one is rated 1.7, so still quite easy. And I want to use this problem to show another example of input and output using Java, this time involving strings. This is a bit of a long problem, so maybe you'd like to give it a read before watching this video, so you know what's going on. To get here, you can just Google a caddis time bomb or go to open.caddis.com slash problems slash time bomb as you can see up here. And now will be a good time to pause the video if you want to do that. Okay, hopefully now you have a bit of an idea about the problem. Again, it's a bit of a long read, but that's part of the game. And as I mentioned before, you often see a lot of fluff in the uh, problem description. Or in this case, it's actually misleading because it mentioned ASCII representation, even though you don't have to care about ASCII at all. All we care about is that we're given a code, which is just a number, and this line here tells us that we need to check if the number is divisible by 6. If it is, then the bomb is diffuse. If it's not, then the bomb will explode. That's it. The only catch is that the number is given to you in this funny format, which they call ASCII representation, which I guess is true since this is ASCII art after all. So what you have to do is you have to read this ASCII representation. Um, let's look at the examples and work out what the number is. So if the number is valid and divisible by six, then you should output beer, such as the last one here. So this corresponds to 27348, which I guess is divisible by 6, so you output beer. If it's not, or if the number is invalid, or well, as in one of the, di uh, one of the digits is invalid, like um, this one here, Oops. you can see um, there's a 1, 1, and I don't know what that number is, then you'll output boom. Okay, so let's start coding. I'm going to start by reading in the input. So I'm going to need to read in five lines of strings and I'm guaranteed it's going to be five lines all the time. So I'm just going to hard code that. Let's make an array of strings of size five. Let's call it data. Um, have a for loop. And just read the line five times. Now I'm going to use next line now which is just going to read the whole line until the new line character. And if you just want to test whether or not this is working, um, I guess we can just output each element of the array. Uh, see if that works. So I'm just going to copy this one, run it. Yep, that seems to be working. So that's good. So now what? Well, there's a few things that you have to do for this problem, and it's up to you which one you want to do first. Number one, you have to be able to extract the individual number from this image. So we are storing a whole line in our array. For example, like this first line here, that's what we have in the array. But a number, well, a digit, corresponds to only three columns. So we have to somehow be able to extract that and once we've done that, we have to be able to convert that into an actual number. So basically for each digit, I have to extract five lines of three columns each and then convert that into a number. So two things we have to do, um, extract the number, I'm going to say. And I'm probably going to write a function that will convert the five lines into a number. So public static int, um, what should I call this, convert. It's going to take five lines of um, string, so it's going to call A, B, C, D, E. Actually, there is one more thing that I have to do. Um, once I have these five strings as an input, how do I determine, how do I actually do it? How do I actually work out what the number is? Um, I have to record these images somewhere. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So um, 
just bear with me for a second. I'm going to make an array of strings again. Um, this time it's going to be a double array. Um, let's call it image. Now, what I'm going to store here is I'm going to store the representation of the number in terms of the stars. There are 10 numbers from 0 up to 9, so I'm going to have a double array. I'm going to have um, 10 entries in this array. And each entry will be of size 5 because each number has 5 lines. Um, again, I'll show you what I mean. Um, to have 0, I'm going to have star star star. What does 0 look like? star space star um, and again and again and the final line is star 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 okay so that's the first entry um, which means if you go to image zero you're going to get an array of five strings and that five strings is what makes the image zero hopefully that makes sense and we'll just do this again for the rest of the numbers. Um, so one will look like um, that. Oops. And two will look like this. What does still look like? Uh, three, one, and it's going to be a full one. Oops. And a full one as well. Okay, so I'm going to pause the recording and just do that quickly. So you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, all done now. I got all 10 numbers in there. And once you have this array, you can convert these five strings into a number, right? So what do you have to do? Uh, simple. Um, we're just going to go through the elements one by one uh, because they're all unique. So I'm going to go through in i to zero, i less than, well, image dot length, I guess, i plus plus. Um, and we say if a is equals to image i 0 well this one's going to be hard coded and uh, also that b is equals to image um, oops, sorry what's it um, i i as well 1 so basically whenever I'm given five strings I'm going to check each number um, one by one um, and I'm going to see if the five strings that I'm given A, B, C, D, E correspond to the representation of that number okay so I'm going to try I equal to 0, I equal to 1, I equal to 2 and so on until I get 1 which is correct if at any time I found um, 1 which is correct I just return I because that's the number uh, okay let's see what's the problem here Oops, I'm missing a bracket. Let's fix that up. Better now. Yep, return I. Oh, I'm just find a bracket. Okay. All right, that should work. Um, maybe it's a good time to test it. Well, I'm pretty sure it works, so I'm just going to go with um, extracting the number. And I know I'm going to call convert somewhere here, so let me write that down. Uh, the question is, what do I give it? So it's going to be like the current digit. Okay, so I'm going to extract one digit at a time from left to right. I know that each digit I have to process for um, three columns. So I'm going to start with i to the 0. So the first digit is going to be at column 0 up to column 3. 
and the next, the next digit is going to start at column 4 or index 3. Um, is that correct? No, sorry, uh, it should start at column 4. So what should I do here? Well, first, let's work out how many numbers, how many digits there are. Um, how do I do that? Well, what's the number of columns? If you have one digit, you can have three columns. If you have two digits, you're going to have three plus three, six plus one column, so that's seven. If you have three digits, it's going to be three times three plus two. So if I do... Um, number of digits if I do data zero that's just the first line length plus one that will tell me um, the, well that will be four times the number of digits right so I just need to divide that by four so hopefully that makes sense uh, why aren't you working Data zero is, oh, sorry, data zero is a string, so that should be length brackets. Okay. So that's how many digits, how many digits I have to process. So now I'm going to say i less, less than number of digits. Um, and i is going to go up by four every time. Okay. And great. That's one digit at a time. And when I call convert, I have to give it five separate lines. So this is going to be data zero dot substring um, from i up to i plus three. Well, the fourth column is just like an empty line. Well, it's just space. So we don't care about that, right? We only want three characters. So substring from i to i plus three. Uh, that's going to be the first line. The second line is given by data one dot substring. Same thing, uh, and then so on. Um, three more times. So that's two, three, four. This will all be the same, and that will give you the current digit. Okay, so we probably need to store the actual numbers. So I'm going to make a variable call answer start with zero um, now that I think about it maybe it's better if I keep this as a string so I can I can just keep on appending the string but uh, doesn't really matter we can say okay so whenever we get a new digit we're going to append it to the right so that means answer is going to be answer multiplied by time uh, by 10 plus whatever the current digit is okay um, let's give it a test. Let's see if this actually works. Um, run it. Two, seven, three, four, eight. That sounds good. So we're pretty close to finishing. Uh, what we have to do now is work out if the number is divisible by six. Oh, actually, there's one more thing. Uh, that should not be written zero, it should be written minus one. Why? Because if there is a digit which is invalid, you have to write boom straight away. So I'm gonna do that here, if current digit is equal to minus one, meaning that it did not match any of the well images here. So it's going to drop down to minus one, it's going to return minus one. Here, we're going to print out boom. And we have to kill the code right away. So I'm just going to write return. So this is just going to kill the program. Okay, otherwise, um, we assume that we get out of the loop. And if answer is divisible by six, and I'll output here. Otherwise, I will output boom. Now let's try it a few times. Beer. So 
So this should give you boom. This should give you boom as well. Okay, and this should give you beer. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to try to submit. I probably would make my own test cases in harder problems, but since this is still a relatively easy problem, so I'm just going to submit this and see what happens. Uh, where's the submit button? Okay. Let's go for Java. Uh, again, make sure you don't copy the package line because that will give you problems. Uh, and that's it. Let's see if it works. Sounds good. Looks promising. And done. It got accepted. So in closing, I still see this as an easy question, but this one has a bit of string manipulation and some hard coding, which is tedious, but I hope you managed to learn something from it. Um, really, I just want to show you how to use next line, but I guess it wasn't a big part of this problem at all. Anyway, uh, that's another problem done. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.